When you think about your goals for this year, for 2024, I want you to think, how can I become a match for that thing? Now, the way to do this, yes, it's thinking about the how, yes, it's thinking about the steps, but more than that, I want you to think about the who. Who do you have to become to be able to have the thing, experience the thing, be the thing, whatever the thing is that you want? I really want you to think, how can I become a match? Now, this is where frequency comes into play. Welcome back to another podcast episode and a YouTube episode. We are doing a video on YouTube. So if you want to go over there and you can have a look at the video as well as on Spotify and the audio will be on Apple. But 2024 goals, everyone's talking about them at the moment, of course, as we reach the new year. I love goals. I love achievement. I'm driven by ticking things off and like just getting shit done. I'm sure you're the same. And for me at the start, when I started my business or started like thinking about goals, they were very much like, I would just think about them. And that was sort of it. I would just sort of dream of them. And that's the thing, right? It's so easy to dream of the thing. It's not as easy to do the thing. It's not as easy to become the person who can do, be, have the thing. So let's say you're wanting to build a team in your business. It's thinking, okay, what kind of person do I have to be to be able to have and hold a team? You'd have to be a leader. So then it's like, okay, how can I start strengthening my leadership at every single point in my business and in my life? It's like, how can I go and learn more about leadership? What would a leader do in every single moment? Say you're having a conversation with a client and you're like, oh, like, I don't know how to talk to this client or the client wants all this and I don't want to do it. Right. I've had moments like that before. That's where you need to lead. That right there is the opportunity from the universe, from God, from life, from your future self, from whatever, your higher self, whatever you want to call it, right? They're giving you that opportunity to strengthen that part of yourself by being a leader. So it's really cool when you think of it in that sort of perspective. It's like, okay, I'm here at A. I want to be over here at B. What is the universe, life, the world going to give me to turn me into the human that can be at B? Because right now and every time I think about why I don't have the things I want, I usually think I haven't learned enough yet or I'm not able to hold it yet. So when you think about being a leader, say you have no staff at the moment, you have no team. Imagine if all of a sudden tomorrow you have a team of 100 staff members. You would not be able to hold that, right? Probably not. So it's like, okay, what's the difference between me now and me who can hold even one team, let alone two, three, four, however many team you want, right? However big your empire is that you're growing in terms of team, it's like, okay, currently I just don't have the skills. I haven't learned enough to do with leadership. Otherwise, I'd be able to bring on a team. And this is where we think about the the conversation around capacity, right? It's like, if I was able to hold more, I would. But right now, I can't. Is it because I'm physically or energetically at capacity? Do I need to learn more? Do I need to lean in when I'm given the opportunity to strengthen the thing? This is really, really important part. So often, there is resistance in business, in life. And sometimes it feels really hard. Every single time I met with resistance, I usually think this right here, I've asked for this. I want to be over here at B. I'm currently on that bridge getting over it. I'm asking to be at B. B requires me to be a different human. Whether it is learning more about leadership, strengthening resilience, strengthening grit, leaning into courage, whatever the the resistance is requiring you to do, expecting you to do, that's because they're building you, they're building your human so that you can get to be. When I think about me now versus me when I first started my business, I am worlds apart and I know that me now and me watching back this video in six months, even a year's time, 10 years time, it's going to be like, wow, I get it. I can hold more now. Business is going to require you to hold more at every single level, right? 
So if you think about the thing that you want, the thing that you really, really want, and I don't care how logical it is, we're going there. I don't care how big and bold and wild it is. We are going there in 2024. Who do you have to become to get there? What do you need to strengthen? What do you need to do more of? What do you need to do less of as a human? Some things that I would be looking at and I do look at when I'm trying to go from A to B in whatever capacity it is. And there's like a billion I could give you. This is what we do in my mentorship. This is what we can play with in Calibrate membership, especially the mastermind. This is my world, right? It's like, how do we get from A to B, the next evolution? The first thing that I want you to do is learn about frequency. Because frequency is the thing, right? Frequency is the thing that you're tapped into to get to be. Frequency is the who, it's not the how. Frequency is going to be your best strategy. Reason being is that if you think about all of the winners, all of the one percenters, all of the big dogs, right? Think about the frequency of their human, the energy, the emotions. Where are they at? And even though they might feel moments of low frequency, right? Just not quite clicking, dysregulated, self-doubt, tapped out. The difference is they know how to pull themselves back up and they live up the top more than they do down the bottom. It's not to say that the people who are killing it in business and life are just living up the top of the frequency scale. Like they're just high vibing all the time. That's not the point, but the point is they know what to do with it. They're not sitting in low frequency. How you respond to a situation is going to change depending on what frequency you're in when you're met with that situation. So if something's really hard in business and you're at a low frequency already, it's going to feel 20 times harder to deal with. If you're putting yourself in a high frequency, through environment, standards, conversations, people you're hanging with, learning, mentorship, memberships, all of the things that I talk about in Frequency Masterclass. If you're putting yourself in a high frequency and you're met with a really hard situation, you're going to be able to deal with it a lot easier. What happens when you deal with a situation in business? You can hold more. Makes sense, right? In terms of getting from A to B, if you can hold more, You've just gone that little bit further, that little bit closer because you can hold more. The the difference between where you're at now and your future human, they can hold more. They've learned more. They're more courageous. She has more resilience. She has more grit. Your future version of you, she's more in every aspect. So wouldn't it just make sense that you pu- you learn about frequency and then you put yourself in a high frequency so that when these situations happen, because they will, you're like, I'm good. I'm up here. I want you to think about selling. When you're selling on socials, through the podcast, you're writing email copy, wherever it may be. If you're in a high frequency, selling's a breeze. Selling's easy. If you're in a low frequency of scarcity, unworthiness, anxiety, attachment, right in that lower end of frequency, you're not going to be able to connect and match the frequency that your client is looking for. Especially if you're an online coach, this is so, so important, important for everyone in the world, everyone in business. But people are coming to you because they want to feel expanded. They want to feel like they're in the presence of power. They want to feel uplifted. They want to be called forward. If you're not doing that for them because you're in a low frequency, they're not going to match. They're not going to connect. So imagine if you put yourself in a high frequency and then you go to sell. You're more likely to become a match for the thing that your client is currently looking for, no matter what you're selling, no matter what you are selling. Because if you're coming from a place of scarcity, people don't want to be around that. They've just come away from that. They want expansion. They want power. That's what you get to give them. And if you're choosing to put yourself in a high frequency, notice it's a choice. 
People wait to feel good. And it's the worst thing that you can do in business. I'm just going to wait until customers along come along, then I'll feel good. Your customers, your clients aren't going to come along because you're not currently a match for them. That's the way that I look at things in, in life, right? The frequency that you're at, no matter where you're at in terms of a scale, in terms of emotions, in terms of energetics, no matter where you're at, you're currently a match for something, good or bad, quote unquote. <laughs> good or bad, you're a match for something. If you feel like bad things keep happening and, and bad, take it with, it can be a small bad or a big bad. It could be, I just spilt my coffee on me or like a bird shat on me, or it just started raining when I got my hair done, right? Bad, or it could be big bad. If, if you feel like that keeps happening, rather than blaming the world, take a second to be like, okay, what is my energy currently a match for? Is my energy my emotions, my mindset, my state, which is basically the definition of all of those things, currently a match for really good things. What is it a match for? I want my frequency to be a match for ambition and drive and power and success and expansion. So I choose to put myself and do things very consciously, very intentionally so that I'm in a high frequency so that I can bring those things into my world. No, this is not woo woo. This is not like, oh, just like manifest and affirmations and cross your fingers and it'll come. This is how it works. Put yourself in a high frequency and you will become a match for high frequency things, high frequency results. That is why when people say, oh, it's so hard to be driven or it's, I keep, I'm so inconsistent or I just can't get to the gym or I just can't stay consistent with posting on socials or whatever the thing might be. I keep sleeping in. It's actually so easy to do all of the things you want to do when rather than thinking, oh, I need to be motivated or I need to be driven. Instead, it's thinking, I need to put myself in a high frequency so that I can become a match. How much easier would it be to wake up early, to go to the gym, move your body, to eat good food, to drink good water, to surround yourself with good people, to have bigger conversations, to invest in yourself, to jump into mentorship. If rather than thinking, oh, I'm just not a motivated person or I need to wait for motivation instead being like, what action can I take in every single moment just to put myself in a high frequency? You don't need motivation. You just get to physically go and do the thing because you're consciously choosing to put yourself at a match. On the flip side, the other easiest way to do this is rather than thinking, I'm going to put myself in a high frequency so that I can connect. Take a second to think, how am I currently contributing to the low frequency? And that might hurt. That might make you be like, oh my God, that makes me feel yuck. Take some self-responsibility. Where are you contributing to being in a low frequency? Are you waiting for motivation? Are you being inconsistent? Being inconsistent isn't an inconsistency problem. It's a you problem. You're choosing not to do the thing. That's why mentorship is so important and so powerful. Because this is where we get to dissolve all of these pieces so that it becomes easier to become a match. It's so important to look at frequency. So if you're thinking, okay, who do I need to become in order to to have experience, be, do the thing that I really want to do this year? If you were to learn about frequency and then put yourself in a high frequency, which I teach you in the frequency masterclass, or it's also in the mindset bundle. It's going to be so easy for you to become a match. Do that every single day. It's the basics. It's not hard. It's not difficult. You just have to know how. And then when you are presented with resistance and hard things and, oh, it's easier to just lay in bed or, oh, it's easier to not post the thing. Oh, I'm scared of judgment. Oh, I'm X, Y, and Z. Instead, all of that gets removed because now you're running of a mindset of high frequency behaviors only. 
Just know that if you put yourself in a high frequency, you're more likely to be a match for those kind of things. Why would you not do that as a business owner? So first thing is frequency. The second thing that I want you to look at is environment, which a lot of these things fall under frequency. But if you were to look at environment, is your current environment supportive of you getting to be to the goal? And again, this one might hurt a little bit, but it's looking at all of the things, do an environment audit, the conversations that you're having, are they supportive and beneficial? If not, just start to edit them, cut some things out, bring some new things in the people. Are they beneficial or not? Your behaviors, your standards, your habits, beneficial or not? Are you putting yourself in certain environments, memberships, mentorship, gym, friendship groups, whatever it may be, so that you can become that human? Because guess what? It's going to be so much easier to become that human when you're surrounded by other humans who are also trying to do the same similar thing of running really fast towards their big illogical goals We want to feel like we fit in as humans. And the minute that we feel like we don't, the alarms go off. So if you're surrounded by people who make it wrong for you to go bigger, crazier, wilder in your dreams, if they make it wrong, of course, it's going to be and feel really hard to do the thing. Of course, it's going to be hard to hold on to that self-trust that it is going to happen. And that's what's needed. Courage is needed. Risk-taking is needed. Self-trust is needed. If the people around you don't have that, they lack that, they tell you you're wrong for trying to have that, of course it's going to be hard. On the flip side, all of the people who are like, fuck yeah, go bigger, surround yourself with those kinds of people. Because those kinds of people, they're going to tell you to go bigger. They're going to tell you that your goal can be done by mid-2024. They're going to tell you to go and recreate your mood board. Because you're going to tick those things off really fucking quick. Those are the people you need to hang around. Those kinds of people. The third part is I want you to think about what you're normalizing. Again, similar to frequency, similar to environment. What are you currently normalizing? Frequency and environment is going to impact this massively, especially environment. Again, if everyone in your environment is normalizing sleeping in, eating shit food, having no vision, having no goal, having no drive, just cruising, complaining about cost of living, it's going to impact you massively. It's going to be really hard, naturally really hard. You don't need to make it harder than it needs to be. Make it easy for yourself. And the thing is, it doesn't mean you have to cut these people off. It doesn't mean you have to make them wrong, right? They might have different views, obviously, if that's where they're sitting. That's okay. But it's whether you're choosing to normalize it as well. Even look at the way you react or respond when they're having conversations about those kinds of things that aren't beneficial to where you want to go. Are you like, yeah, haha, I agree. (laughs) Or are you like, silent? That's an option. Just don't involve yourself in the conversation. Cut yourself off from the conversation, walk away from the conversation, or challenge the conversation, depending on who you're hanging with. There's power in you actually standing in your power and challenging the conversation. I do it all the time. I'm like, we're not doing this. We're actually not doing this conversation. Let's change it to this. Or I go, I actually don't agree. I don't think that. I don't believe that. The the, the reason why this is so important is because whatever you normalize, you're going to collect evidence for. If you're normalizing that no one is buying and it's just, it's the start of the year, Christmas has just been, no one's buying. If you're normalizing that and everyone around you is normalizing that, you're going to look for more evidence to where that's true. 
Because whatever you're normalizing is your beliefs. They're your thoughts and your beliefs. You are constantly collecting evidence to support whatever belief you have about everything in the world, (laughs) which is crazy. So if you are like, oh my gosh, no one's buying, you're going to go and see where, oh my gosh, no one's bought in the last 30 seconds. The world must be falling apart. And then you're going to relate with other people who are normalizing the same thing, unless you're consciously aware of it. Thank God you're listening to this episode. Oh my gosh, no one's buying for you. No one's buying with me either. Oh, cool. And then what does that do? Gives you a very good reason as to why no one's buying because now you've related. Oh, if no one's buying with you, it must just be what everyone's doing. Cool. Then what? You don't have to take responsibility for why no one's buying. Because if you got yourself in another group of people, I bet you that they would say people are buying every bloody minute. Sales are streaming in, waking up to sales on my phone. Right? So you see how it's like a domino effect? The environment dictates what people are normalizing, what you're choosing to normalize. You're then collecting evidence to support that. And, and the more you collect evidence, right? You go, oh, no one is buying. Oh, no one is listening. Someone else said that no one is buying. Someone else said that no one is buying. Oh, here's a random reel about the conversation around the fact that no one's buying. All of this is protecting your ego. And all of this is compounding, getting heavier and heavier and more tight, right? So then you go to sell or you go to post or you go to put yourself out there or create something new, be innovative, whatever it may be. And it feels so hard. Why does it feel hard? Because you have all of this evidence as to why should you even bother if no one's buying Why should I bother creating a new offer? If no one's buying, why should I show up and sell today? So whatever you're normalizing, it's actually keeping you really, really safe. Depending on what the thing is. If I don't have to show up, I don't have to fail. So I'm just going to stay here and keep saying that no one's buying. See how it's like there are so many spider webs in this thing of what you're normalizing. On the flip side, I want to flip it. And again, this is just one example. This could be a thousand different things. But let's say you were in a group of humans who were normalizing. Oh my God, everyone's buying. Oh my gosh, I'm going to make a sale today. Oh my gosh, do you feel that frequency shift? That frequency shift just changed completely. I can feel it in my body. Someone's going to buy today. You're going to make sales this week. People are buying and investing right this second all over the world. The exact thing that you're selling, someone's just about to buy. Frequency shift, normalizing shift, and then what? You're also going to collect evidence as to where people are buying. You're going to put yourself in more conversations about the fact that people are buying. See how what you normalize is going to dictate your beliefs the way that you move, the way that you think, the way that you be, the way that you do in all aspects of business and life. You get to choose what you normalize. It's a choice. I have zero sympathy. Zero. If you think that that's not true. Because it is. You have a choice in every single moment. It doesn't matter if it's your partner or your mum or your sister or your child or your employee or everyone in the industry. If every single human in the industry on planet Earth think one thing, you still have the choice to think the opposite. And in fact, that's what leaders do. That's what the 1% do. They think the illogical. They go against the norm. Because they know that they can bring anything in this world to life. And I want you to believe the same thing. I want you to see the fact that you also are limitless, that anything is possible. So let's recap. Getting from A to B. Think about who you need to become to be able to be there, to be able to hold more. Think about frequency. Come and learn in the Frequency Masterclass or the Mindset Bundle. 
Get two for one, even better. Put yourself in a high frequency daily. It's a choice. It's a daily thing that I want you to do. Next, look at your environment. Conversations, people, what you consume, who you follow, behaviors. Then off the back of that, look at what you're choosing to normalize. Look at what your environment, the people around you are normalizing as well. How can you just start to shift these things by 1%, 10%, maybe 100%. Maybe you're like, you know what? This is it. Today's the day. And I want you to know I'm here for you. You've got this. I love you. We're we're going to the freaking moon and I'm bringing you with me beyond the moon. 2024 is your year. It is because you're here and you're doing the thing. Currently, what you've just learned, you can now do more and hold more and be more and move faster just from listening to this conversation. You're already doing the thing, my love. I'm so proud of you and I'll talk to you in the next episode.